Okay, okay great. Okay, thanks everyone for, uh, for coming to my talk. Uh, my name is Matthew Wilcox, I work for Oracle. Um, I don't intend to be talking about any general product directions, but uh, in case I slip up, that was, that's got the lawyer satisfied. Um, I am going to simplify some things during this talk. My slides certainly simplify some uh, things for clarity. Um, if, uh, if, if, if I say something that's not clear, please stick your hand up and shout at me and, and I'll try and explain it better. Um, if, if I say something you think, well, that's not quite true, say that nobody cares. So, um, since Linux's creation, Linux has managed memory in pages, and before Linux's creation, Unix has managed memory in pages. And pages are a concept used by the CPU. The CPU um, will, can map memory in pages into user space. And so it's a very convenient uh, chunk of memory to say, this is our basic fundamental unit of memory. Um, the problem is that uh, systems got a little bit, little bit larger since 1991. Uh, the first computer I had had four megabytes of memory, and uh, so that's a thousand four kilobyte pages. Um, these days, we're, we're looking at you know, one and a half billion pages. Um, that, that, that's, that's a few orders of magnitude. Um, fortunately, we don't actually try and manage the whole thing as a uh, as, as, as one and a half billion pages. Uh, we split it up so the, the particular. Oracle bit of hardware I'm talking about here. It's, it's, a, it's a five U system, right? It, it sits in a rack. It's a nice big machine. Um, and we actually split it up into um, what we call NUMA nodes. Um, basically, we, we split the machine up into eight and have them all cooperate with each other. And so each of them is only managing a mere 192 million pages. Well, that's still a few orders of magnitude larger than uh, the thousand or so pages we were managing on my first machine. Um, we, 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 we managed them in a number of ways, but one, one, of the, one of the ways we manage them is that we need to know which ones are going to be the least valuable to us. Wh which ones can we send to disk um, and, and recycle and reuse these pages for something that's more valuable? And to do that, we have something called a least recently used list. This is a fairly classic data structure. Um, a lot of uh, operating systems use this concept, and not just for memory, of course, for many other things. Um, but uh, having such a long LRU list is really inefficient. Uh, we have it, the, the list is protected by a lock, and so whenever you go to uh, access this list and modify this list, take things off it, add things to it, uh, you've got to grab this lock. And so that lock is shared between all the CPUs within a NUMA node. Um, with, and you know, we could have perhaps 50 CPUs or more. And so they're all contending on this one lock. Um, and it's really bad, because not only are, are they holding this lock, but you tend to get a cache miss. And when you get a cache miss, you, 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 you may have to take thousands of cycles waiting for the cache line to come to your CPU. Um, and that really amplifies the bad effect of having all these CPUs, because you're now holding the lock for far longer than just reading the code makes you think you're holding the lock. You, know, you, you, look, at, you look at the C code, and it says, take lock, um, modify list, drop lock, and you think, oh, that's a couple of instructions. No, it's thousands, because, it's a, because it happens to be cache cold, and so you're waiting for some other CPU to give you the cache line that you actually wanted. So um, there have been various efforts in Linux to reduce the length of the LRU list and to reduce the uh, length of time. There's been some very, very clever um, optimizations suggested for how to improve um, the LRU uh, lock contention. And um, I'm here to say, don't do any of that. Just shrink the length of the list by managing memory in bigger chunks. Now, it turns out we've actually been talking about mem managing memory in bigger chunks since at least 1999. That was the earliest discussion I found. And it's, it's been it was with some people who've been with Linux for a very long time. <laughs> um, and some of them are still quite prominent. Um, Eric Biedemann, Ingo Molnar, Andrea Akalenji. Um, and then later, um, perhaps around 2003, uh, Ben LaHaye, Hugh Dickens, Nadia Chambers, and uh, then later on, Kirill Shutamov have all had a good go at trying to manage memory in larger chunks. 
And so a number of different topic, a number of different ways of doing this have been proposed. Uh, memory comes in very, memory is used for various different purposes. So sometimes you use it to cache files. That's the kind of, that I'm most interested in, that I know the most about. Uh, it's also used for anonymous memory. So when your program in user space says, I, wish, I would like to call malloc and have some memory, that's called anonymous memory because it doesn't have a name. Um, so um, one, one, of, one, one of the things we found uh, when I was working at Intel was that uh, for some workloads, ARM, produced, ARM performed significantly, far, significantly better than x86. Uh, that was a cause of some concern, as you might imagine, to Intel. Um, and uh, they the, the benchmarking team determined it was because ARM was managing memory in 64K chunks while Intel was still managing memory in 4K chunks. It's like, oh, that's a real problem. We should do something about it. Well, that was when I started getting involved in it. And uh, then I left Intel, and we went to Microsoft, and now I'm at Oracle. And I'm still working on this problem because it turns out to be a hard problem. And uh, I think it's one that's going to benefit all of us, not just you know, benefiting Intel. Um, so we, we could do what ARM is doing, right? What, what ARM does is it says, okay, we're going to manage all memory in 64K chunks. But that has downsides. Um, it wastes some memory. Um, and it's really, really hard to make sure that user space doesn't notice that you've started playing this trick. Because user space likes to be able to uh, map memory on four kilobyte boundaries. And we've, we've made that guarantee to them. And we don't want to break that guarantee. So I, I discarded that approach. I said, that, that's probably not going to work out all that well. It's, it's kind of simple in a way. And it's something, it's, it's, very, it's very tempting because it's a simple solution. And we do like to have simple solutions. But sometimes simple solutions don't work all that well. Um, so then I started talking about, well, perhaps we'll just manage the page cache in 64K chunks. And that has similar problems, right? It's still really hard to, to, to not break user space. Um, and we actually tried it. Um, back in 99, we, we put in these macros to say, hey, maybe the page cache has bigger size pages than, than, than the rest of the system. And we actually ripped that out in 2016 because it, we hadn't done that in 17 years. And we started to think about, well, can we do it? And it's like, well, it probably doesn't actually work. So we just ripped that code out again. I believe it was Kirill who ripped it out. Um, and I, I, I was grateful because I was trying to get my head around it and I was failing to. Um, so what I decided to do was to use large pages adaptively because I don't know what the correct size is. I don't know whether 16K might actually outperform 64K. There's definitely workloads where that will help. Um, and if it's adaptive, then nobody can blame me for getting it wrong. Uh, and more to the point, you can't blame your sysadmin for, for misconfiguring your kernel or your, or your operating system distributor for configuring a kernel for you that's got 64K pages instead of 4K pages. Right? We, we might have a bad algorithm for deciding when we're going to adapt, but then we can just fix the algorithm. That's just a bug. We can fix that. It's much harder to fix, oh, Red Hat needs to make this change, and then Debian needs to make that change. So when you allocate memory in Linux, you, when, when, you allocate a when you allocate a page of memory in Linux, you don't just get the four kilobytes. You also get this little metadata structure called the struct page, which tells you a little bit about the page that, that you've got. So, you, 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 so given, given the struct page, you say, well, where is this really in memory? Like, what's its physical address? And what's its virtual address? And what, 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 um, which NUMA node does this page belong to? All, all, all that kind of good information is stored inside the struct page. But when you allocate um, the struct page, you, you actually get to use chunks of it for yourself. You've got roughly 60 bytes of memory available to you on, on the side. And several of the um, uh, several of the people, several of the uh, parts of the kernel that allocate memory do in fact do that. The page cache does it. The slab cache does it. Uh, something that's called ZS malloc that I don't really know much about does it. Um, 
and, and, and this is allowed. This, this, is, like, this, this is a guarantee that the, uh, the, the page allocator has made to the rest of the kernel. You can use this memory for your own purpose. Um, but one of the things that the, uh, the page allocator does is it allows you to allocate not just a single page, but it allows you to allocate what we call a compound page. A compound page is two to the n uh, pages that are glued together and behave kind of as if they were a single page. And this is what I based my work on, the fact that we have these struct pages. And, and, and we're already doing some, some stuff with um, compound pages in the page cache. Uh, the tempfs file system used them, and um, there, there, there are a couple of other ways you could actually get um, you, 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 could, you could get compound pages. But the fun, the fun thing is that um, th this was done in order to use the CPU's ability to chop off a level of the page table. If you were just in the last talk, he was talking about how page tables work. And if you allocate a two megabyte page, then you, you, instead of putting in the bottom level of the page table, you can just put in the single entry and the CPU knows, ah, this is a two megabyte page and it can treat it specially and it's more efficient. And people get these confused. Right, what I'm talking about is making Linux more effective at managing memory. And what a lot of people hear is, this is a way for us to get all the way up to two megabyte pages and then everything gets more efficient because the CPU is using two megabyte pages. No. It's not about that. If we never get above 64K pages, that's going to be fine. We are going to have a significant reduction in LRU list length. There are other side benefits as well, but that is my primary focus, is just managing memory more efficiently, not about using the CPU's abilities to treat very large pages more efficiently. So when you allocate a compound page, I, I didn't want to show you um, an order nine page an illustration board and nine page because it wouldn't work very well. And this is the kind of page that I will be allocating during this talk. It's an order three page. So that means you've got eight struct pages that are glued together and behave as if they were a single page because they're a single allocation. So you allocate it, you, you do stuff with it, and then you free it. And it's always glued together as eight consecutive pages. So we call the first page um, the head page. And the head page is where all the, uh, the, the, the real action goes on. The, the tail pages are occasionally visible and almost always cause confusion when people see a tail page. We have um, some of our uh, functions understand what to do with a, a, a tail page, but other functions say, oh, no, 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 if you're going to pass me a, a, a page, it had better be either a, a, a single page allocation or the head page. Um, some people try to indicate what kind of page they expect by saying, oh, I want a head page. But even that's confusing, because if, you have a, if you've done a single page allocation, you can pass, uh, you can pass the struct page in. But it's not a head page. It's just a normal page. It's a plain page. So we're kind of suffering from uh, a naming problem here. We don't really have a good way to say uh, single or head, right? or just not tail. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was where I came in with, we need a new name. And that's how we got the name folios, um, or folio. So if, if, if you look at the various uh, definitions of the word folio, um, you, f you find really there are two. Um, if, if you look at book binding, you, you, you take a very large page, and of well, a very large piece of paper, and you fold it a number of times, and you cut the edges off, and it's several pages. Uh, and the other is it's a, it's a large page size. And, and so I thought, you know, having these two, two different meanings and being able to look at it two different ways, that, that kind of made it the perfect. Uh, the perfect name. Um, we had a lot of arguments about names, and nobody really came up with a better one. <laughs> um, so in, inside Linux now, um, we, we are transitioning from using pages to using folios. 
And if you need to refer to, sometimes there are still cases where you need to refer to a precise page. So in the page fault handler, you need to know exactly which page from within a folio is the one which corresponds to the page fault. Um, but if you're referring to the entire memory allocation, you should use the struct folio that contains the page that you're looking for. And of course, many folios will contain a single page. And that's fine. That, 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 that's, it, it's still beneficial even if you're only dealing with single pages um, for reasons I don't need to go into particularly. So let's just expand struct folio here a bit. And uh, the, 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 this is what it has. This is actually basically the same as what's in struct page. Well, it's a cut down version of what's in struct page because I, as I was saying earlier, when you allocate a struct page, you are encouraged Permitted? Permitted to use um, the, the contents of whatever you like. Um, whereas we're saying with folios, no, no. If, if, you, if you have a struct folio, it, it's, it's either one of these anonymous pages or it's a file page. It's not being allocated to slab. It's not being allocated to anything else. Folios are like the, the, these, these fields in the, uh, in, in the struct actually refer to what they really are. Um, it's, it's not the case that somebody's you know, hijacked some of these uh, elements, and it, that's not really a, a, a pointer to an address space. That's a, point, that's a pointer to something else entirely, or it's actually an, an integer, and we've just cast it because this is C, and we can do that. Um, we're saying, you know, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll try and keep it clean, and we'll keep it tidy. And one of the ways we did that is that we, we went to the slab allocator. And fortunately, one of my uh, collaborators on this, uh, Vlastimil Babka, um, is a slab maintainer. And he was more than happy to help. And I was very grateful to have his help. And what we did was, I'm just going to flick back and forth between these two slides so you can see there's really very little difference between these two data structures. Right? Some of these things get, oops. <clears throat> Some, 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 some of these fields change their names. Some of them change type a little bit, but they are almost identical. All right, and so they're actually using the same memory. Right? That, that, that's the important thing to know. The, when, 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 when you convert from having a struct page to having a struct folio, or you convert from having a struct page to having a struct slab, you aren't following a pointer. You aren't going off and looking at a completely different data structure. These data structures all overlap in memory. And that, that's, that, that, that's for efficiency. That's how we want, um, I mean, that, that, that's, that, that's, how, that's how things were anyway, right? We haven't changed how uh, Linux is managing memory in, in, in that way yet. We're still working with um, these 64-byte data structures that describe what memory is. It's just now that we've changed the types. And so the compiler can say, hey, you're passing a struct slab pointer to something that's expecting a struct folio pointer, you probably didn't mean to do that, and I'm going to throw a warning or an error. And that's very useful, because it means that you can't pass a struct page pointer to something that's expecting a struct folio. So you can't, you can't pass in a tail page to a function which is, expect, which is expecting a folio. The, so the, the whole question about what should a function do when it sees a tail page just disappears, because it's, it's, it, it will never see a tail page. We also have runtime assertions in case somebody has decided to lie to the C compiler and say, oh, no, I'm just going to cast this, this tail page to a, a, a folio. But uh, those, those, those are in, only enabled by uh, people who debug the memory manager. They wouldn't be enabled by real people. So uh, the, the, they certainly aren't enabled by distributions. Uh, so you know. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it's of no concern in terms of um, overheads. Um, the, the other, there, were, there were two other benefits to uh, doing this work with the slab allocator. One is that we were actually able to make this data structure entirely private to the slab allocators, um, which means that unless you're working on the slab allocator, you don't even need to know that this data structure exists. And that's really significant because it used to be about a third of the definition of struct page. 
and we've now entirely deleted it from the headers. So we've just shrunk the, uh, the, the, the definition struct page by about 30%. Um, and uh, yeah, if, 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 if you want to scare people, get them to read through the definition struct page. It is um, over 200 lines. It's, it's really uh, quite intimidating. Um, it used to be worse than it currently is, but that's no excuse, and uh, we, we need to make that an awful lot better. So what have we got upstream? Turns out quite a lot. Um, we, we, we started upstreaming this work back, back in August uh, 2021. So we've been at this almost a year. Um, you'll notice that we skipped 5.15. I had a big pull request ready. And it got knacked. So 5.16 was when we, we really got the initial Folio APIs. Um, and then we've been slowly working our way through various different parts of the kernel. Now, you may remember the whole, the whole point of this was so that we could have large pages caching our files. Well, it turns out that file systems generally are not prepared to see uh, folios which are larger than page size. So uh, we, we allow a file system to now say whether it does, in fact, support uh, folios of size larger than, 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 uh, than a single page. And so we've done that for XFS. We enabled that back in March. Uh, so if, you're, if you have XFS on any of your machines and you, 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 um, you run a relatively recent kernel, you can actually start testing this. Uh, it seems to be fairly stable. I've, we, we've had a few bug reports. Um, they've all been addressed as far as I know. So uh, I don't know of any current problems. Um, and they, they've tended to be races. And what I love about working with the XFS people is that they live and die by their test suite. Um, and they run thousands of, of machine hours of tests per week. And you know, they, they, they run it far harder than, um, than customers would tend to. So uh, I, I, I like to hope that we've got most of the bugs out. And the bugs we're finding now are weird ones, right? They're, they're, they're races. They're, oh, if you truncate this file at the same time as you're reading from it, and then you also write to it from a third thread, then this matches that. And, it's complicated. Like, even just writing it out in, in a pull request about why, why this patch needs to happen, it, it, it takes a few lines to really describe what's going on. Uh, one of the interesting things is we got a lot of the support in before we actually enabled creating large folios. That didn't come in until 5.18, uh, May 2022. Um, so, yeah, we, we had a lot of the support in place. And of course, we were, we were testing it, right? This is just when we landed it. We, we, we've actually been creating large folios and testing them with XFS for like a year before that. It's just that this is when that code landed and was available to people who weren't willing to run a, a random uh, a kernel on, <laughs> on a random website. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see 5.19, uh, July 2022 hasn't happened yet. We're, we're, we're anticipating the release of 5.19 um, around about the end of next month. Um, and we've already got work queued up for 5.20. Um, we're hoping to add one new file system, the uh, Andrew file system. Um, and yeah, we, we, we're just continuing to work through converting old code that uses struct page to use struct folio instead. Uh, it's, it's a, at this point, it's a gradual uh, performance improvement kind of um, uh, situation. It, it works, right? The, e even though we're going through converting between folios and pages and back to folios and back to pages, it all works. It's just we can do it more efficiently by not going through the conversion process so many times. So I've kind of skated over uh, how do we decide? Um, what, what, what's our algorithm for deciding what size folios to create? Um, there were those who said, oh, we should take hints from user space. 
And if you uh, look around, you can find various uh, articles uh, describing how user space gets hints wrong all the time. Um, I, I, I think I saw a paper from Google that said something like 90% of, uh, <laughs> of, of, of their programs are using uh, huge pages when they shouldn't be. And so they're looking to um, ignore those hints. <clears throat> um, some people said, oh, just leave it up to the file system. I'm like, well, the file system de developers are not going to like me saying that. Um, the file system just doesn't have enough information. It, it, doesn't, it can't tell whether it would be useful to use uh, a, a, a larger size uh, unit to cache the files on it. It can sometimes say, oh yeah, uh, just shift the boundaries around a bit. I, I can be more efficient if you just move the boundaries around a bit. But, and, and, and so we've given file systems that degree of control, um, but we haven't allowed file systems to say, um, other than saying, no, I can't handle um, large folios at all, we, have, we haven't given them any kind of detailed control about, you know, I, 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 I would really like to handle them this way. It's like, no, keep it simple. Um, and what, what, what I settled on was using the read ahead code because we're already trying to predict the future in the read ahead code. We're, we're, we're looking at the access pattern that the program has had to the file by calling read or, or possibly doing page faults. And we're deciding how far ahead into the file should we be uh, prefetching, right? Should we, be, should, we should be starting reads now so that the data will be here by the time the program wants it. So we're already trying to do some degree of that. And so that just seems to me to, me to be the right place to say, Okay, let's um, let, let, let's start increasing. So you start out by, and, and let's say you start out doing like one kilobyte size reads. It will start out allocating you four kilobyte pages because it doesn't know, you know, is 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 this is this going to be successful? Is it going to be worth doing anything more than a four kilobyte page? But as as as, as your reads continue and it becomes obvious that really you're you're just scanning through the entire file one kilobyte at a time. Um, we, 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 we'll, we'll start to allocate larger and larger pages just to get the overheads down, right? Um, because allocating one 16K page is, is way better than allocating four 4K pages, even before we start talking about the LRU list, right? Just, just in terms of immediate benefit to me, it's much better to allocate a single 16K uh, page. Um, the current algorithm is extremely stupid. Um, it, 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 it quadruples the size of the page every time it says, yes, this was a successful read ahead. Um, I would hope that somebody comes along and does it better. I'm kind of expecting that in 20 years' time I'm going to go back and look and it's still going to be there because nobody's bothered. But um, if, if anyone's looking for a project, uh, analyzing uh, how successful this algorithm is and replacing it with a better one would be uh, much appreciated. Um, because that's not something I'm interested in doing. I've, I've, I've got a whole bunch of other projects on, on my list, and uh, that seems like something that somebody else can do. Um, something I simply haven't implemented yet is um, creating large pages when writing to the file. If you're writing to something you've already read, that's fine. It will just use whatever pages are in the cache, no matter what size they are. But if it's having to create new pages in the cache, perhaps because you're appending to the file, or you've just opened the file, seeked to a bit of it, and then you're starting writing there, it will start using. It will just use all the zero pages, and and that's pure laziness on my part. I simply haven't got around to that yet. Again, that's something somebody else could do, but realistically, it's probably something I'm going to um, get annoyed at myself for not having done yet, and just go off and do it one day. Um, I said I wasn't going to do hints from user space, but then I started looking at the nmap code, and the nmap code already um, uses this uh, m advise hint, m add huge page, and so if you and and that means if you, if you go look at the m advise man page, you will see that means I really want you to use two megabyte pages, and I said, well, that hint already exists. Fine, I will honor that hint. And that's actually the hint that the Google Papers says don't use. But um, file pages are a bit different from anonymous pages. They're used in different ways. So may maybe it will work. And you know, at least um, at least user space asked for it. I mean, <laughs> may may maybe we're giving them what they asked for instead of what they really need. 
but you know, it's, it's, it, it is at least somewhat justifiable. And something I haven't done um, is I have not gone above two megabytes. There's nothing intrinsic to what I've done that says you can't go above two megabytes, but I believe that we've already got most of the benefit by the time we go above two megabytes. And there are places in the kernel which assume that if a page is at least two megabytes, it is exactly two megabytes. Uh, technically PMD size, right? But if, if we're talking about Intel, it's two megabytes. Um, and I just don't feel like going and finding all those places and fixing them. When I notice them, I fix them, but I wouldn't dare say that I found them all. And um, given everything else that I was working on, I just didn't want to go off and fix all those at the same time when it's not even clear to me that there is any benefit to it. Because there are downsides to, to using large folios, right? Uh, if, you, if you mark one as dirty, that is, you, you, you write to it, the whole folio has to be written back. Right? We, we, we don't keep track of each little bit of the folio to decide whether or not it needs to be written back. So you, know, you, you, you write one byte into a two megabyte folio, and boom, we do a two megabyte write in order to get that back. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, some file systems, some storage devices work much better when you give them very large chunks of work to do. And if your workload exhibits reasonable locality, then you're probably not just dirtying one byte, you're probably dirtying a lot of bytes. And so what we're, what we're doing is we're trading off, now we do fewer IOs, but they're larger, rather than now we're doing the same number of IOs and each one is larger, so we're doing that much more um, work on the disk. But not all workloads have good locality, and uh, I, I, I don't necessarily want us to bump all the way up. Um, if, 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 if we talk about perhaps going to, to a ludicrous extreme, uh, we, could we could create one gigabyte pages, right? We, we, we could manage everything in terms of one gigabyte. Well, the fastest SSD I can find does five gigabytes a second. And if you're only able to do five IOs per second, that's you know, 200 milliseconds to wait for a page to be read in. That's ridiculous. Like you, you, <laughs> the glitch of, of, of on, on, on your audio, you know, 200 milliseconds, that, that's forever. It's so noticeable. So I don't think we ever want to go all that large. Now, maybe I'm going to be wrong. You know, May, 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 maybe SSDs will get even faster than they currently are, right? Perhaps we'll see orders of magnitude improvement in SSDs um, as, as we have in the past. Um, I'm just not counting on it. But, you know, when, when, um, when we do, when, 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 when we're seeing PCI Gen 20, uh, you know, we, 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 we can adapt to this, right? Folios will be there ready and waiting. We just need, we'll just need to find the assumptions and fix them then. But until then, I, I just don't think it's worth it. I think we're going to get most of the benefit already by going as far as 64K. And if we only go as far as 256 kilobytes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we will have re reaped almost all of the benefit. Speaking of benefits, I've got some performance results. Um, this mostly from the Intel kernel test robot, although we also got some interesting results from uh, the Pharonix test suite and some others. But uh, some of these are absolutely stunning. Uh, a 241% performance improvement for uh, that particular benchmark. And you know, 60, 20, 45%. You know, these, these are some really good numbers. Now, if you go click that link, it will tell you about the 18% performance regression on some other benchmark. Uh, and, and, and these performance improvements are, are a, a little <laughs> note at the bottom. Oh, yeah, by the way, we just see some improvements on other tests. Yeah, uh, so the 18% the performance degradation, that was a bug, that got fixed. Um, and um, yeah, we, uh, we, we now, now we're only left with the improvements. <laughs> um, yeah, so the benefits. We get a shorter LRU, so which, which translates into uh, shorter lock hold times. Uh, and fewer cache misses because we're dealing with memory in larger chunks. We don't have one struct page per four kilobytes. We've got one struct page per 256 kilobytes, 64 kilobytes. So fewer cache misses to 
manage the same amount of memory. Um, we actually reduce memory fragmentation. Because the file system is now uh, allocating memory in large chunks, that increases the pressure on the memory allocator to keep memory around in larger chunks. Um, there, was a, there was a big fear of fragmentation, memory fragmentation when I started introducing this, but actually it's beneficial to memory fragmentation, and we have the measurements to prove it. Um, we do larger IOs. That tends to benefit both uh, disks and file systems. Um, we possibly have opened the, the, the door to getting rid of 16 kilobyte and 64 kilobyte uh, configurations. I'm still arguing with um, Oracle's um, uh, uh, distribution team about whether we can actually ditch the 64 kilobyte page size. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. There's, there's various consider considerations to go in there. Um, and um, one, one of the things we're doing is we're getting rid of calls to compound head. This is actually shrinking the kernel. The, um, ev ev so ev every time you call some of these functions, uh, with an, and you pass them what is potentially a tail page. It, it, it's a call to this function called compound head that says, go, go and get me the compound head of this page. Even if it's already the compound head and the compiler knows it's the compound head, it still goes and gets the compound head. Very annoying. Um, I, I, I tend to put those, um, those, the, the, those uh, memory reduction wins into the commit messages and you add them all up and it's tens of kilobytes of kernel text that uh, get removed <laughs> as a result of getting rid of these calls to compound head. Um, I, I, I aim to get rid of about five to 10 kilobytes per uh, kernel release um, just by submitting patches that convert things that use struct page to use struct folio. Um, all these calls to compound head just disappear. Um, so there's a whole bunch of future work, um, which I might come back to in just a couple of minutes because I've been told I only have a couple of minutes remaining. Uh, but I wanted to thank my contributors. I could not have done this without all of these people. Um, people here work on XFS. People here work on uh, uh, the network, network file systems, memory management. Um, just all kinds of different parts of the kernel have been affected. You can see that this has been a, co a cross-company collaboration. <laughs> um, many of these people... Um, yeah, just said, yes, I want to help. I want to be part of this. And uh, that's been absolutely fantastic. And um, I, I would like you to thank all of them with a round of applause, because they've done <laughs> so much work. Um, so I think I've got about two minutes to talk about what things I might want to do next. Um, so just like we did for struct page, we, need to, we, can, we can split out other struct page users, and that's just going to benefit everybody just by clarifying what we're actually using struct page for. Um, we might, it might, once we've done all that, we might be able to dynamically allocate memory descriptors, and that will shrink the amount of memory you're using. Um, we can... Um, we can make TempFS more efficient. Uh, we, we need to start converting file systems from the old buffer head mechanism to use IOMAP. And once we do that, they will magically get the ability to use large pages themselves, uh, large folios themselves. Um, but for the file systems we don't want to convert, we can still do the work to convert them to use folios. It's much better to convert them to, new, to convert file systems to use IOMAP because IOMAP does so much more of the work for them. If we can't do that, at least let's convert them to use folios so that we can just get rid of these calls to struct page. Um, again, maybe not large folios, but at least folios. Right. Um, I think I may have regressed the performance of OSync. That's something that I need to work on, something I need to look at. Uh, I want to handle the mapping count of folios better. Right now, you have to iterate over every single tail page in order to find out how many times each, each of tail page is mapped, in order to find out how many times the folio is mapped. And this is a ridiculous idea. Um, but I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't quite got to having a better idea yet. Um, when, we, when we hit a page fault, we know, we've got, we, we know we've got a page that's in a folio. We could actually map each of the pages in the folio into user space at the same time and cut down on page faults that way. I haven't written that code yet. That's an easily separable task. If somebody else wants to take that on, that would be fantastic. Um, oh, and we need to do large folios for anonymous memory. 
right? Because this is, I, I, all, of, all I've been doing is struct folios in general and uh, for the page cache. We need to also do this for anonymous memory. I don't know, anon I don't know anonymous ver memory very well. Please, somebody else do that. That would be fantastic. And that's my time. Thank you all for coming.